Hi everybody, this is Liz with 143 Handmade. Thank you so much for joining me today. And we're going to work on making some more of these lovely little envelopes. And these I just kind of fumbled through and created. Um, you know, I've made envelopes with a bunch of different templates, with a bunch of different little boards, you know, all kinds of things. Um, I inked some, I didn't ink some, you know... This one's made out of cardstock, the rest are paper. I, I gotta say, I prefer the paper to the cardstock on this case. <clears throat> or maybe just that cardstock, it's kind of a thick cardstock. But in any case, this is how I did it. So I have this pad. For anybody who doesn't know, this is, I'm kind of doing Christmas all year long. And all I mean by that is I'm just, I'm just creating Christmas themed stuff, trying to work through my Christmas holiday you know, stash this year. And so I had this pad and it is, um, it's six and a half by four and a half, this pad, it's six and a half, four and a half. And so like, I didn't really know what to do with it. I mean, there's a lot of different things. Obviously it's, you know, I can make a million cards, you know, why not? And so I was just folding some of the paper up one day and it kind of sort of looked like an envelope, not really, <laughs> but it made me start thinking, you know, hey, can I make an envelope? And so I did, and I created this template, but you really don't need a template. You can do this in a lot of different ways, but what I did is I measured two inches from either end, and because it's six and a half, that makes this area just a smidgen bigger. If it was just six inches, then all three of these sections would match and that wouldn't work. But because it's six and a half, this works nicely. And then I did a score line half an inch up. This, it looks really wobbly, but it is in fact even. My drawn line is wobbly though. And then I did an inch and five eighths down. Now the down, you can adjust that however you like your little flappy. You know, that's just what I did. And, and all I've taken to doing is stacking two on top of each other, marking the top one, and then I just take my scissors and snip in to each of those corners. And there, the lines aren't exactly straight um, on the bottom because that just, it helps everything fold in. If you just take that little extra slice Instead of taking it exactly even, you just take it just a bit bigger. Um, for me, those two tiny cuts right there are actually the hardest on the whole bit. <laughs> but what's really cool about this, I think, is that these two little squares that you cut off at the top, see I saved all of those and I rounded the corners on a bunch of them, not all of them. And I'm going to, those fit inside the little envelope, super perfect, you know, super well. There we go, and one more cut. I would not recommend cutting more than two at a time, but you know, you know yourself, you know what you're capable of, cut what you wanna cut, right? And so what I was doing is that as they were coming off, my little squares here, <clears throat> I would take because I was doing it in, in a stack of two, you know, so I'd take two of them and put them in my little corner rounder here and round all of the corners on two of them. And then I left the other set square, you know, just to give some variation. That way, you know, as these are going into, here, we'll go ahead and you know, and put one in with with the rounded corners and one with the square, you know, and it gives some variation. So, and again, you can ink these, you don't need to, you can do whatever you want. Um, my pad happens to be white on the other side, so I was thinking that I would just leave them plain, so that way, you know, whoever uh, gets these can do whatever they want with them. Okay, so after I have this shape, you know, it's a pretty standard envelope fold. Um, I did do one other little, little thing to see just to make an envelope, you would just fold up here and then fold here, make that flat. There we go. 
and you could just glue it and have your envelope like that. I didn't really feel like that gave me a lot of access. It's a fairly small, um, you know, little envelope here. And so, and I did pop these little corners into my rounder as well, but you totally don't have to. Corner rounding is just one of those things that it is all about just what you like, aesthetic. And so what I did is I opened it from here and then I folded it not to the line. See, here's where the line is. You know, I'm not sure how much of a space, but it's, you know, a little bit of a space and you want to get them roughly the same, but it's, it's not, you know, critical. The angle doesn't have to match. None of that matters. Um, and then you just refold it and now you've got, you know, that nice pocket space where you can reach in there readily. And then to anchor them closed, um, I was just gluing them. Honestly, I wanted to sew them, but I have very sad news. My sewing machine is broken. Um, and it's an old machine and well, see, here's the thing is it's old enough to be difficult to get parts for, but it's not old enough to be like one of the old mechanical ones. It's a fairly new, um, you know, within the last, let's see, I bought it, I don't know, within the last decade, I think, you know, it's, it's probably only about 10 years old. So it's one of those that it's, it's just old enough to be difficult to repair, but not old enough to be, you know, an antique and where you have resources. So, so we are actually going to a, a mom and pop shop and I might be getting my antique, an, an antique machine today. But, so I think it would look super cute with a, just a bit of sewing along this bottom edge to hold it closed. You know, I think that would make a cute little addition to it, but the glue works great, you know. Uh, one thing I did find is if you use directional paper, because see, most of what I used is non-directional. You know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I guess this is directional. All the trees look, are upright, but it really doesn't look bad with them upside down. Um, you know, the swirls, even the candy canes don't look terrible upside down. Um, but like on the ones with the words, what I did is I covered the flap with and, and this part where the upside down words were. Yeah, see, here's, here's one. I didn't like that. And so what I did is I just took, I have this bit of um, leftover wrapping paper and I just put glue on my flap here all the way out to the edge it's just a little piece so you don't need a lot of glue but you do need it all the way to that edge especially down here on this this front but really all of the edges are important in a situation like this I like to just get it nice and just a nice flat coating. Rub the glue off my finger real quick. <laughs> and then I was using the the pre-cut edge to help me here. You know, and lay that just on that fold. So that way that I don't have to do anything there. And then what I'll do is I'll let that dry for a second. And let me see, do I have another small piece over here? No. Okay, well, this little piece is ripping off anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and just rip it off. And so you can see right here, there's these two, you know, the joy down there at the bottom is, is upside down. I don't really care for that. So, again, I'm just going to put glue right here where I want to cover. Being careful not to get it anywhere else. And I do go ahead and take it all the way to the edges, even though, you know, the, <clears throat> the upside down bit isn't all the way to the edge. And then on this one, because I, I did the roughly edge, what I'll do is I'll drag the glue down with the roughly edge. See that? To spread it out. And then that gives me glue all along that roughly edge. And then I can place it on there and know that that edge has a good amount of glue on it without worrying so much about glue spooging up. And there we go. And then you just come in with your scissors 
Um, you might be able to rip this. Um, I found that because I was using paper as my base, not cardstock, I preferred to just cut. So, and that's how you do that. Super simple, super easy. Anybody can do this. You don't need a template. Um, you know, you just need to do a little bit of marking, a little bit of, you know, you can measure it, or you can just take the concept and apply it to whatever rectangle you have. You know, and it doesn't have to be, you know, precise. There we go. And see, now we've got those that jo those upside down words all covered up. See how nicely that works. So, thank you all for joining me. I can't tell you how how much I appreciate every single minute we spend together.